Etzel, E-D-S-E-L. See, it's funny because the Etzel is like a really old car, and hello and welcome to the stream. <coughs> okay, hopefully today we're going to be able to finish off the uh, what we've been working on. Uh, we're just trying to find out when the, there is a full total eclipse on a planet everywhere on the planet. And we're very close, but I think we have one of the numbers messed up. Uh, in fact, I don't even think we need to recompile, we just need to rerun... Um, we just need to rerun the program we ran before and look for inconsistencies. Okay, so over here we have an angle uh, Q of 0.54, um, an angle delta and an umbral angle of 0.26. So, uh, you know, the angle minus the angle delta 0.4 is too big. There is, uh, n there, there should be no eclipse. So we're not returning, a, we're returning a negative number, which is fine. Okay, then, and this continues for a while, returning negative point. Okay, and here's where we make the uh, the big jump. 0 0.14, 0 0.14, uh, 0 0.13, 0 0.13. Um, and you can see we're getting very close here. Uh, here the umbral angle is 0.26, the delta angle is 0 0.10, so the, um, the, the angle of the, you know, 0.39 minus 0 0.10 is 0.29. We're very, very close to where we're about to touch and get get the um, first part of the planet into the into the partial eclipse. Okay. Uh, okay. Angle Q. Uh, I think this is inside of an eclipse. I mean, uh, I'm sort of going off. We had going off of what we had last time, uh, which was um, that we were very close to an eclipse here, and I think we actually. We hit one. Let me make sure, though, by doing this, um, since we're looking at all these timestamps. Um, no, actually, that is not correct. So, what went wrong here? I could have sworn that we um, could have sworn that we only are printing under certain conditions here, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, okay. All right, maybe I should go back to the, what we did previously and see what was wrong with that. Okay. Um, or maybe I should even just go back to seeing what our output was. Maybe that's the, uh, that was the thing that was wrong. Okay, yes, we were getting no output whatsoever, even when we knew that there was a partial eclipse on the moon, and therefore, a, uh, therefore something that's reportable to us, provided that we had, let's see... Okay, so, okay, right, so we can report partial eclipses like this, and I think that part we got working and we were pretty happy with. Um, and I'm just going to do one quick check. Sorry, I've got to catch up a little bit. I didn't, as always, I don't prepare for these things because I don't care. Um, so the one at, let's see, May 26th, this is 2022, right? 2021, rather. Um, so let's go ahead and look at that one. So the good thing is this does not list um, May 26th at 946, and this is when the partial eclipse begins, I believe. And that's exactly what we expect. The problem we're seeing is uh, when the full eclipse begins, we should start seeing numbers big, bigger than um, one, and that is what we're not seeing. So that is that is the issue here. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and do this. And I think, yeah, I think we're going to have to pretty much just. Uh, yeah, you heard me say. Okay, hang on. Let's just see if we can do this, and if we get to... Well, that, that was pretty good, actually. Um, and this is just to clear the uh, the search so we don't have highlighting. And let me take a quick look here and see if we're in the right time zone... Well, the right time frame, rather. 10.22 on May 26th. We are very much uh, within the um, within the uh, the correct time frame. Now, the only, the only issue here is you'll notice this um, eclipse only lasts for like 14 minutes, so maybe that's why we're missing it. But let's 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 take a look. Let's go ahead and look at this over here. Um, 
the umbral angle is 0.26, angle of delta. So here we, we are definitely, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, here we're definitely within an eclipse. Uh, and suddenly we will go from 0.45 to 0.10 to 0.10. Do we skip over that eclipse? Maybe that really is the problem. All right, so over here we have a return value of 0 0.10, very close to total eclipse, but not quite there. And then over here we have, um, okay, returning 0 0.10, 0 0.10, 0 0.10, and over here our Unix timestamp is, uh, sorry, is this sucker, 9.52. Um, so we're still not quite there. So let's keep s seeing what happens. Returning 0 0.10, and suddenly we get a big increase in what we're returning. Um, unless I'm, yeah, here it is. So we go from returning this number to returning this number. So what's happening over there? And so let's see what that what that skippage is there. So we're going from 952 to 1007. Um, 3669 is 1007. Uh, and why are we getting such a large return? Sorry, 1007. And we're still not quite in the uh, full eclipse stage at 1007. Um, so have I? What have I messed up here? Let's take a look here and see if we can find out. Uh, angle Q is 0.29. Angle delta is going to stay right around the same here. Um, and the umbral angle is going to stay the same. So it looks like we're getting... Um, oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, we are getting deeper into the eclipse here. That's, that's actually okay. Let me highlight that. We are getting deeper into the eclipse as we're, we're going in. Uh, so Okay. Why do we go from 0.45 to 0 0.10? That's a one hell of a question. So we go from pretty high eclipse to pretty low eclipse here. And that is going from... And that is going from pretty high eclipse yeah, maybe I need to be a little bit more careful here. Um, pretty high eclipse at this time, to suddenly very low eclipse at this time. Okay, I'm going to pretend I didn't see that, but I'm wondering if it, if I, this might be doing a goal. This might be doing like a seek. So this is actually okay that this number is lower than this number. Um, okay, I'll believe that. Returning. 0 0.33, 0 0.33, 0 0.43, 0 0.43, 0 0.49, 0 0.48. And we're looking at intervals of about two seconds here. 4459 versus 4457. Um, 0 0.49, 0 0.48. Um, wow. See, with, with stuff like this, it looks like it's really, really close to 0.5, but doesn't quite hit it. And I begin to wonder why. I begin to wonder if the way I have this written, it's never going to be able to uh, to be over 0.5. And in fact, an easy way to find out is to sort, and we will maybe do that in just a second. But let's see, the angle Q is 0.26. Uh, delta is 0.09, so we can go down as far as um, 0.17 fairly deep within the umbral angle. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, returning 0.4991, um, Yeah, something tells me I have made a mistake that involves never being able to go past 0.5. Um, the angle Q, angle delta. So the angle Q, once it gets below like 0.19, we should be seeing a full eclipse. Um, although at this moment it doesn't appear that that's going to happen. Um, let's see if we can force the issue. Uh, no, we can't. 
Oh, but it looks... Okay, hang on. So let's... Yeah, let's go ahead and do this. And, of course, I meant to say returning, not returning. And let's do a sort minus uh, K2N on this. Let's look at what the lowest possible number this ever becomes is. So it goes from minus 1, which is fine, uh, up to... Da -da -da -da, and you see that, yep, something is wrong. I've made it so that it can never be greater than 1 half. Uh, let's see why that is. Um, I bet you anything it's because of that absolute value that I cleverly put in there. Yep, and it does look like the way I've made this um, this happen. We have a um, yeah. I think I probably meant to do a absolute value on only on angle Q, um, and the umbral angle minus angle Q. Um, I guess I actually want, I mean, if we're going to make this a plus sign, I probably want angle Q minus the umbral angle. So, let's see. And I'm going to do something that I probably shouldn't be doing here. I'm going to assign a new variable, um, because that way I can print it and I can return it without having to worry that I didn't update both of them. So... Well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna not tweak it that much for right now. Let's see. Um, and I think what I probably meant was this um, instead of what I actually had, which was uh, taking the um, taking the absolute value of the difference. I probably meant to take the absolute value of the angle and then the difference. And I'm actually fairly confident about that. I mean, it's not going to be right, but fairly confident about that because um, it was angle Q can be negative. The umbral angle can never be negative. Oh, right, right, that actually makes sense. So actually, when I was doing that negative, that wasn't correct. Uh, everything here is um, positive. So the only way this could be negative now is if angle Q is uh, greater than... No, sorry, less, th well, yes. The only way this can be negative, this can be positive, which means the whole thing becomes negative, is if angle Q is bigger than the, is smaller than the umbral angle, um, which is the case we want. And if it's sufficiently smaller than the umbral angle, we have a total eclipse. So let's see if we can boogie down with that. I don't know why I said boogie down. That just sounded weird. And let's see if we can just go straight and get the right answer. Probably not. Ooh. That looks really good, except I think this period of time is like forever. Yep. Uh, right here, and that's just basically uh, until the first eclipse. Huh. I wonder if I got the test exactly flipped now. Um, so this would be 3.30 on May 16th. Wait, did I say May 16th? Yeah, 3.30 on... Okay, so we're not... We're missing the 2021 eclipse, which is bad anyway. Yep, 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 yep. All right. All right, let's go ahead and do this now. We'll just, um, and one more thing I'm going to do here because I'm just getting sick and tired of not seeing my, of um, having these things run together. I'm going to put a, a new, new, another new line in before we start printing all this garbage. And maybe I should actually just do that like this. So even if we move things around, we get our new line. Okay. and then we'll just run it, and for right now we'll just pipe it to less, see what happens. That looks not much nicer. Okay. And I think we said this is the um, returning value is, is bigger than one means there's a... Really? That means there's a full total eclipse of the moon at all points, which is clearly not true, because this is way too early. But let's see why it thinks that. So the angle Q is this. Um, angle delta is this. And the umbral angle is 0.2. So it's nowhere near big enough to be doing that. Um, and yet you're returning this number, which is not correct. So umbral angle minus 
uh, point two minus angle Q. Aha. I think the way I've done this, I actually mean this to be a plus sign now. Or I'm just randomly making up formulas until something comes along. Either one, I don't really know. Alright, let's see if we get... Well, this looks more promising. In terms of it at least might be... Uh, we might at least be back to the case where we have partial eclipses. So 946 to 1251, which we know is not correct, but let's see what that is again. Um, yeah, that's the partial eclipse beginning and ending. So maybe now uh, we need to change BC occultations. And we want to know when this value is bigger than or equal to 1. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's a floating point. But we will say equal to because we might need it. All righty. This won't work either, but you know. I think at this point we might even be going in circles, which is nice, because uh, I like that. Whoa! That, that didn't go over well at all. Oh wow! For floating point, I guess you can't do greater than or equal to. It has to be greater than. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Oh, and I guess we're going to look at the output. Ooh, that looks very exciting. O three thirty to four fifty two. But we've missed the one in 2021, which is not good. Um, but that might just be because our, our uh, increment step is too big. Um, so let's see if these times are at least correct for um, 2022. Um, Um, well, this is May 16th, 2022. It'd be really good if I were to... Alright. May 16th. This clips here. And let's see. We say 330 to 452. 330 to 454. Gorgeous. So the only thing is, why did we miss the uh, eclipse of the eclipse of 2021? Probably because it was our window of one hour didn't catch it. So that's vaguely interesting. We I am going to lower this window, but but uh, one thing we can do here is um, we could look at all the cases where there's penumbral eclipses with a fairly large window because we know that those are at last fairly long, at least they should. And then within that window, look to see if there's a, uh, there's a total eclipse. Uh, for right now, let me go ahead and move this down to uh, 600, which will vastly increase the amount of time it takes the program to run. Uh, but hopefully it will give us all the eclipses. If it does, we, we have something. And in this case, we, we will definitely get the results we had before. And oops, I don't think we're still getting our results that we want yet. Let's see, this is still 2022. Well, now I'm suspicious that the, um, the eclipse here, sorry, the eclipse here, uh, the full eclipse does last for 14 minutes. That the 10 minute window should be enough to find it. Um, so let's see why it's not. And let's see what we can do here. 47. And this is really terrible. I should be making a lot more um, notes. I should be putting in some values. And I think maybe I will do that. Uh, so this is the one from what, 2021? Okay. Yeah. 
All right, let me go ahead and make some more notes here. I think uh, I'm being a little bit too sloppy. So, eclipse of the sky, total lunar, total loony man. Okay, and I think we can just copy this. We, we'll probably tweak it a little bit, um, as in a lot. Okay. Number of eclipse begins. Blah, and I'm actually more interested in the uh, G the, uh, U the the Unix times that this all happens. So I will I will um, do that as well here, and then this will give us a little bit of a better debugging tool. And I'm just going to keep saying. See, while I'm doing this, I really can't think and talk at the same time which is sad, or think and program at the same time, even sadder. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to put the Unix times to the left of these, and I'm going to be obnoxious, and um, I think I've done this before. Um, um, where I've used the Emacs to, uh, let's see, so that's 084739 GMT, May 26th, 2021. It is May 26th, right? Nope, I said 25th for some reason. 26th, and that's the time. Um, and now, of course, we want that in seconds. So, this is pretty cool if this works. Aha! And then, same thing, but now it's 094458. And then we have the same thing, except now it is 111126. And this is this is boring, I admit, but this is this is all part of it, unfortunately. Well, for me it is. Uh, there might be way better ways of doing this uh, that I'm not aware of. But and this is our, this. I mean, I realize we could probably be have done this better to begin with. But uh, this is um, this is how we're going to use the output to figure out exactly what the value is versus what it should be. And let's see. That in there. And we don't really need the other two, so we're just going to go with this. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run. We don't even need to recompile here. Oh, actually, I don't even. We don't even need to stop running the program. Okay, so the thing we're looking for here is basically sixteen two two zero, something roughly like that in the Unix timestamp. And that is a period of 10,000 seconds, so we should be able to find it. I love when it does that. Um, all right, because this is 2021. 20, oh, wait, did I? No, we, we did the whole thing. This is 20. Let's go ahead and start at 2021. 20, Unix time is uh, 16220. Interesting. It, it starts off here at 1921 uh, and I guess I should say yeah 19121 uh, which puts us between the penumbral and the partial eclipse stages uh, returning that's fine we're still not returning the, the beginning of the partial eclipse yet uh, 0 0.70 and we do I think return the partial eclipse correctly so we should see this very nicely become positive at 2721 we're saying and over here we had 22721, sorry, 22721. So that's pretty close to where it actually happened. Um, a little bit after this it says, and I think it's going to do a goal seek until it gets gets to that number, uh, until it finds exactly where it's zero. So now we're turning bigger than zero, now we're 0 0.24, 0 .2, we're, we're moving towards getting bigger than one is the, is the issue. 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 0 0.77, good stuff, good stuff. 0.87, 0.87, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 0.94, 
0.98, and this is where, 0.99? Come on, man. I'm rooting you on. You've got to get bigger than this. That just sounds weird. Um, 0.99. For some reason, it's just not going to cross one, which is exactly what needs to... Okay, 0.99. Okay. Um... Because this plus this is very... Okay, I've actually got to figure this out now. I'm curious. If what this is saying is correct, we're saying angle Q plus angle delta is just a little bit bigger than the umbral angle, which is why we're not quite getting that total eclipse. We're still peaking out a little bit. And so that is 0.2623. Yeah, it is actually. So, all right. So now we're at 27921. So we're at the point of the maximum eclipse now, 27921. And according to this, um, the angle is 0.16, the delta is 0.09, and the umbral angle is, it's just not, qu very close. Uh, but it's just quite not there. Um, it's fascinating. I'm, I guess it's trying to find the maximum value here. Point nine, <laughs> man. Point nine nine one two one two zero five. It's going to repeat that value for quite some time now. Um, So this is probably a big issue because we are, this is not something we should be missing. Nine, nine, man, we're just going to go crazy with this. Um, I'm kind of tempted to see if it's going to go to what the next value goes to after 0.99. Okay, 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 good, 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 good. Okay. So I guess this was its attempt to find the maximum, and it went several times, 27,922. Oh wow, that is the maximum clip. So it, it tried really hard, and it missed. So the, the question we have now is, um, what the hell, dude? Uh, let's see. Um, I guess we could bring up Stellarium and see what this looks like. I mean, it's very, very close. Uh, so I'm sort of curious as to uh, what happened. Are we in that rare case where the portion of the uh, moon that's not eclipsed was also not facing the sun, so it didn't count? Um, that because we have not been checking for that um, and the problem is we really can't bring this up um, even though it's two-dimensional it's very very difficult to bring up accurately because these numbers are so vastly different um, let's see attempt the umbral point um, Actually, we could probably do it with T-Temp and the umbral point, at least. Uh, and then the umbral angle of from the umbral point would be 0 0.26 degrees. And, nope, I mean, it looks like, um, yeah, I mean... The angle between the moon and the sun here, um, you know, between the zero point of the of where the where Q is, and that this is like only 3,044 kilometers uh, divided by this huge number. Um, that just doesn't seem like it would be enough. But let's go ahead and see if we have Mathics running somewhere, or if not, if we can make it run somewhere just to annoy us, we'll bring in a new window. 
Yeah, I just I just don't see that this number is going to be big enough to be. Um, I mean, you know, um, the difference between the light side and the dark side of the sun. So here's the angle of the sun. Uh, I guess it's either, it's either the arctangent or the arc sine, and, and with the numbers this small, it really doesn't matter. Uh, arc tan, and let's convert that to radians. 0.001. Wow. Are we literally at that point where the 0 0.001 is going to be the difference? Um, uh, angle Q plus, and this would be subtracted actually from angle Q plus angle delta, but let's go ahead and do this. Um, angle Q plus angle delta minus this 2, 6, Nope, it's still bigger. It's still 261247. Um, although it's very close. If it's two times this, 2600, wow. So the twice that angle actually is enough to put it to where it's fully eclipsed. Um, honestly, don't know how to work around this. Um, And I'm trying to think what point of the moon would be uh, would be not lit by the sun. I mean, actually, in this in this diagram we have um, all right. This is the Earth and the sun. The moon would be like at you know 3,044 kilometers lower because it's going to be on the uh, have on the x-axis where y is zero, um, which means. Um, yeah, and the sun has has radius and width too. I mean, this is just really weird, and I'm wondering if we can form it in terms of a complaint um, to NASA to say, "Hey, you guys, this is um, this is not correct," um, because. Yeah, this peaks out of the umbral angle by just a fraction of a, a fraction of a, a blip, kind of thing. Um, so let's see here. Um, it actually looks like this is going to be twenty-five two. Wait a minute, it does look like that. Hang on. Twenty-six two three, so it is a little bit bigger than the umbral angle. Um, I wow. I wonder if it's because I'm using arc signs instead of arc tangents. Um, because uh, I'm pretty sure arc signs are correct, but we're talking about a very small difference here. Um. Let's fire up Stellarium and see if it agrees with me. I don't think it will, but... Unless I... Do I have Stellarium already running? I do... What the hell is this behind me? Hopefully nothing bad... Oh, that's just the browser. Okay, let's go ahead and bring up Stellarium. And let's go ahead and get back... Oh, we're back on Earth. Good. Um... Let's set the date to uh, 2021.0526. And I don't really care about the time right now because I, we have the bigger problem of finding the freaking moon. Yep, and that's one of the problems when you put too many things in here. To find the moon, you actually have to go to the second shiny. Um... And we're going to have this start at, uh, okay, about eight hours, so, so we're good. Okay. All right. Let the eclipse begin.
And we'll just we'll just have some fun watching the moon for a little bit here until it starts being eclipsed. A little bit faster maybe. Not really seeing much of an eclipse yet. Here nope. There we go. Okay, let's do that again backwards. Okay. So we're here at 11 a.m. The total eclipse is presumably central at 11.18. So let's, let's really cook here. Uh, it's interesting, we're getting some, I think it's called Libration. And I think I'm going to have to do this minute by minute. I think we're going to have to actually stop the clock here and go. Uh, unfortunately, this is being really fuzzy with the... Um, with the moon. Um, so according to this, the, the, the total eclipse will start at 11.11. Um, 11. So let's go ahead and bump that up to there. At least. What the hell is that? So the question is... That's that's tricky. Let's let's flip our viewpoint to the moon. Let me fly you to the my moon in the pink El Dorado. I don't know why I said it like that. All right. According to this, right now we're very close to right now. Um, every point on the moon is witnessing a full total solar eclipse. We are here on the moon now. And. Um, Let's look at the sun. And certainly from this point, wow, we are seeing a total solar eclipse. But the question, I wonder, I wonder if I can shrink this window. Apparently not. The question is, are there portions of the moon where this is, n this is not happening? Okay, come on, I'm going to need a bigger... Let's jump go north. Let's also maybe keep track of where the sun is when we do this. Um, I don't know what the hell that is, but okay. So keeping track of where the sun is, this is going to be a little bit tricky. And as we go north... Oh, uh, yep, there it is. We have some, we have some solar, solar view. Oh, ni 92 degrees north. That's an amazing amount of northness. Okay. Um... Okay, uh, let's, I want to be careful here. So now let's move slowly forward time-wise. Well, a little bit faster than that, maybe. Um, wow, we're going to be pushing this one right down to the second. Oh man! Okay. And when the the total eclipse was maximal at eleven eighteen, I think. Um. Eleven eighteen and forty two seconds. Let's crank you up there. And lo and behold. We still have at a uh, at an actual location on the moon, very close to the north pole of the moon. We do not have a total eclipse. Uh, it's a very very close to a total eclipse. I'll give you that, but it is not a total eclipse. Which means this portion of the moon is still being lit by the sun, a very small part of the sun, but still part of the sun. 
So now the question is, well, we have several questions here. First of all, hey, stop disappearing more of the sun. The, the sun does disappear completely at any point. We're screwed. So let's see if that does happen. Nope. It doesn't quite happen. Okay, that was probably a bad idea, but anyway. Okay, so what we're saying here is we have found a case where we believe um, there is not a total eclipse of the sun. Now, there was one problem that I probably should have looked at earlier. Let's go back here. So we're here at 11.11, we're going to go to 11.18. Okay. Now the one thing I didn't look at here is whether or not the sun was visible, so we should put in probably ground. Crap. Um, wait. Azimuth altitude. Holy crap. So according to this, the sun is seven minutes of arc above the, the horizon, which means it should not be below the horizon. Uh, I don't know. This isn't looking too good. Uh, all right. Maybe it's time to write a letter, and of course you get to join me in doing that because... Uh, again, I don't really care. I don't really care for you guys too much. I'm kind of starting to dislike you, actually, openly. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so let's go and write a letter and say um, what we think we've discovered here. And then let's see if um, if maybe we've, we've, um, uh, we've figured something out here. All right, let's... First of all, let's make sure that this... Um, the, uh, let's just see if NASA knows about this. Well, of course they know about this eclipse. Uh, let's just see what NASA has to say about this. NASA 2021 lunar eclipse. Um, and lunar eclipses 21, 20 to 2030. This would be amazing if they say that it's not a, it's not a full solar eclipse. Um, total. So they do say it's total. Ooh, they have all sorts of shininess. This, this is here. Um, so to them, the great greatest eclipse is occurring in 1119. Ecliptic conjunction is 1115. Um, penumbral eclipse durations. Umbral total is only lasts for 14 minutes. And they don't really say a lot more about this. Um, they have zoom in here. I don't know why. I mean, this is just an image. Okay. And here's where it becomes an issue. I was using the moon's, um... Well, wait a minute. So I wonder if this is a question of if you were to use the moon's Polar radius, no, it's the same thing though. The moon is spherical. So, so this is good. This is an interesting question. Um, wow. And how, we could probably prove this using horizons. Um, that if you are at the moon it's the North Pole and you look to see where the Sun is and you look to see where the Earth is and you look to see what the Earth's diameter is there's there, it's, it's missing there's a the Earth is qu not quite big enough to cover the Sun uh, let's proceed in that direction Horizon's web interface Yes, yes, we know the everything's going to change and never really will. 
So the target body is going to be the Sun and the Earth. The observer is going to be um, the Moon. Uh, the Moon itself. Now I'm wondering if we can have the observer be not the body center of the Moon, but the North Pole of the Moon. And it appears that may not be possible. Um, and of course, th there there are, there's a limitation here. Um, so, of course, if we wanted to, we could change the time and stuff. But let's um, let's see. Um, And, and we're, we're, we're talking about something that's very, very tight, and I'm beginning to think maybe we shouldn't care, but but because um, the Sun, Moon, and Earth, the size similarity is so close uh, that stuff like this is, is just insanely hard to notice. Um, but maybe let's send a quick... Let's... let's, let's uh, at the very least, let's make a note. Um... All right, and now whether we want to do that now or later, uh, let's see. The question is: Is this good enough? The fact that it actually misses an eclipse is terrible, but if you accept what we're seeing, this eclipse really isn't total. Um, And it might be a question of how how dark it gets. I mean, I mean, if you know, if it's sufficient that like 99% of the sun is covered, and you still have a uh, total eclipse, that is correct. Uh, then then we have just misdefined our total eclipse to say uh, it must be a total solar eclipse everywhere on the moon. Um, so I'm tempted to to. I mean, this is such a small error, and yet. To say that you've missed an entire eclipse is really, really bad. I mean, that's the kind of thing that you, uh, you know, that you don't want to, uh, uh, you don't want to be uh, missing. The Earth's umbra, and they do admit it's very close. I mean, they, they, they do, they do say that here at U two, which is the uh, a band, um, U three and U four, it's. If you're at the North Pole of the Moon, that looks damn close. Well, actually, let's at least get it up to 100%. And... And I've used the Earth's largest radius, so I think... I think we have a case here that uh, this is not, not going to happen. Um, unnecessary zoom. Oh, crap. Yeah. It's very tight, very tight. Um, so, I don't know if there's... Let's see if there's anyone in the audience that actually exists. Maybe. So if you're in the audience and you actually exist, you can now tell me what you think I should do. Uh, should I write the letter to NASA explaining that I think I found a flaw in, the, in one of their eclipses, uh, and it's not really total, or should I go ahead and just uh, pretend this is close enough and start looking at the Jovian moons which is kind of what we wanted to do in the first place. That was sort of the reason we, we built this program. Uh, it's for the Jovian moons. Okay, uh, and uh, no no response from the chat. Mm. <sighs> decisions, decisions. Okay, but I mean this is very very tight. So let's actually, um, yeah, let's actually see if it got the next eclipse after this one. And if it did, I think we're going to say that this is that's good enough. Uh, if I can find where I did all this, here we are. So we're going to miss the 2021 eclipse, 
barely. And I guess shrinking the time didn't really help much, so we can go ahead and put that back to 3600. And so the next eclipse it finds is, uh, so it finds the one that goes on the blood moon of 2022, the May one, November 8th, 2022. And God damn, this better not be a case of where it thinks this is not a total eclipse, and it is. Um, why isn't there a page before this? Anyway, let's do this again. Total occurring May 16th, total occurring November 8th. Okay, good deal. Uh, let's see if we can pick this up all the way down. Well, I don't know. And of all the eclipses, this does have the, sh you know, a really short duration. Let's see if we can pick up the one in 2026. Because that's not as short, but... Um, we are going to recompile because we just changed the, the jump time, the, the step. Let's see if we can get the one in 2026. Which, okay, we got something. Uh, March 3rd, 2026. 58 minute eclipse, we picked that one up. Um, the one in 2029 is 54 minutes. Not that one. And yes, I realize this is approaching a waste of time. <whistles> okay, this is weird. This is... So it says there's one at December 31st, 2028, which actually might not... Um, um, oh, there is one on December 31st, 2028. I was so busy with this one, I didn't see that one. So let's look at the last one in um, in this year, which is this one, 2020, uh, December 20th, 20, uh, 2017, um, 54 minutes, okay, let's boogie this puppy, um, let's go ahead and print out the length of the eclipse and see what the shortest eclipse it can report is, uh, so we'll do this as et And that'll be the uh, length of the eclipse, which is... Uh, we don't even need to convert it to um, Unix times because it, they're both seconds. Um, let's do this. Let's remake the program. Now let's go really crazy here because for once... And we're going to use the clever name temp output. No, shoot. I forgot we were printing debugging. fgrep output t temp output. This will take a little bit of time because we're doing 100 years. Um, so I sort of regret using a uh, 30... Well, I think we have to use a one-hour timestamp. What I'm trying to do here is find the shortest eclipse that this thing will tell us about um, and then compare it to what other sources say is the shortest eclipse of this uh, century. Uh, and, yeah, so this is, uh, yeah. And again, maybe, oh wow, that was not as bad as I thought. So, this is field number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, K7N, and less. Okay, so the shortest one it's going to find for us is 1214 seconds, which is about 20 minutes. And it says this occurs on April 4th of 2061. Let's go back over here. Um, why the hell do I keep not getting what I want? Am I just pushing these things too far to the right? Um, oh, well, hang on. Where do I go for ones that are... Uh, catalog lunar eclipses. Um, 
Oh, here we are. 2061. A bunch of numbers I don't understand. Well, actually, let's see if we can do this. Okay. Totality is about 30 minutes. We say it is less than that, I believe. And I'll claim this totality is about 20 minutes. So that this looks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this good. I'm gonna mention, uh, at some point we're gonna write all this up. So somewhere we need to mention, um, completely misses 2021 eclipse, but weird. Uh, you know, and this is again, total lunar of Earth, but I don't think that's an issue with Jupiter's moons because they're much, much larger. Uh, I mean, Jupiter's much, much larger. Total, total lunar eclipse of moon by Earth. Okay. So now we're actually going to start looking at what we wanted to look at originally, which was the um, eclipses of Jupiter's moons by Jupiter, and perhaps by other stuff as well. Um, let me go ahead and start off that process real quick by saying, and again, the observer here is Io. Let the moon, let's say 502. I'm getting tired of Io. And Jupiter shadows Io, and we want to know about, we have it set, so it's going to tell us about only when Io is in completely in shadow, uh, which makes me wonder if we should really be doing it some other way. And let's just say for the upcoming year. And and I can do this F grip, uh, which I will do for right now. And so this happens about 103 times this year. Um, and the length, oh, and we sorted it by length. So um, the lengths go from, wow, very consistent. For So right around, um, you know, Right around two and a half to three hours of length every time we get this uh, this occurrence going. Okay, and I think that's Ganymede, by the way. Now, if I'm correct, we'll get a result for Europa. Good, and that is um, 51 times. But Callisto, we will not get a result for because Callisto is too far. Okay, I'm wrong. Huh. All right. January 15th. Oh, wow, so there's one coming up. Well, let's just see which moon Callisto is. Well, that is Callisto. So why did I think that never happened for Callisto? Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and look at it since we still have Solarium up and running. Let's go ahead and look at Callisto and see what this happens. I thought last time I looked at this, uh, Callisto could not be eclipsed. Uh, completely by the sun because of its position, uh, because of its position and its uh, tidal lock. Clearly, clearly wrong. So now we're just going to go somewhere near the middle of Callisto, whatever that means. Um, we will go ahead and turn off the ground because it's not really that important. And we're looking at uh, January 15th at about 10.42. Let's go ahead and do that. And, well, that looks that looks pretty convincing already. All right, so let's go ahead and do uh, 1022 is when we start the uh, full eclipse, according to this. Um, yeah, that looks, well, shoot, it's actually a little bit later than, it starts a little bit later than we say it does. Uh, not by much, but... Something went wrong. I hit the wrong button there. Um, so anyway, but it looks like that that is correct. I guess I incorrectly thought that it could not be uh, that the sun could not be eclipsed on. Um, let's, let's crank this up till we get to. Uh, that happened so fast we couldn't even see it. Uh, this can be a bit too slow. 
All right, so we said the 10th at um, 10.42. So probably just got out of Eclipse at this point. A little bit suspicious. Okay, hang on. So this is... Okay. January 15th, which is a very different date than January 10th. Rocket. There we go. Yep. Okay. Good deal. Now we have a whole bunch of other stuff to worry about, which we will worry about now. Um, Jupiter has a heck of a lot of moons. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to one of the higher level moons. Let's just go to... F I don't even know what 516 is. I think we can find out, actually. Uh, we can do a grep for that one. Oh, five six meters, which actually is going to be, presumably it's going to be eclipsed like 90% of the time, uh, sorry, 40% of the time. Um, and so that was, um, oh wow, I didn't even bother to redirect it, but, so this year it's going to be eclipsed 830 times uh, for periods of over an hour. That's maybe 10% of the time, I guess, I don't know. Um, so now I'm kind of curious to see I know that if you fi it doesn't have 98 moons so if you do this it's going to say there's no such thing as um, there's no such thing as moon 598 550 I think okay okay hang on and this might be a case of me not having the correct um, correct kernels so 529 is Theon, Hemogeny, Kore. So there is a 549. I just don't have what I need to get to it. Okay, so this is where it gets sort of ugly, and this is where we, we really need to dig deep into Jupiter's, uh, Jupiter's uh, parameters. Uh, in other words, um, the Jupiter BSP files. And... This is not that difficult. So right now we have two kernels, Jup 310 and Jup... Ooh. That's not nice. And Jup 343.bsp. Somewhere we should have the comments for these as well. Um, and the comment files will tell us what the time periods are being covered and so on and so forth, which moons are being covered. That is wow. And I guess if we need, we don't want to look at the old versions. Here we go. Um, so interesting. There's a gap in the number in the moons here. Um, this is interesting. Okay. So we've got all the way up to moons uh, 72 here, and then the fragments of uh, Hayatuki Yomamama are considered to have a higher numbers because they're considered um, different. I don't know what that means. Okay, and this goes from um, Ephemeris from Earth-based Stedefit Master Intervals, 18 days, uh, timestamp 27th of December 1799. So we're all within timestamp period. Uh, but now the question is, why are we not getting, um, why are we not getting, uh, like, body radiuses for these guys? Um, okay. That's not looking good. Okay, so why aren't we getting the, uh, the radiuses for these suckers? So let me go ahead and, ooh, I wonder, this better not be it, though. Uh, body 549 radii could not be found in the kernel pool. 
What if I called it Corey, though? Oh. Oh, I guess you can't do that because, um... That's interesting, though. It recognized Corey as being body... Uh... What about body 539? New. No. Okay. Um, so I guess we need to figure out why we can't find the radiuses for Jupiter's smaller moon. That didn't help at all. Um, all right, sea spice, radii of Jupiter's moons. Um, this does not look like it's going to have that data. I'd be very surprised if it actually did. Body 539. Oh, hang on. So it does have body 502, 503, 504, 514, 516, 601, but that's going to Saturn now. Uh, interesting. Yes, Jupiter has tons of moons. Um, it's an interesting question. Why would this be in a PCK file instead of a, uh, sort of a, well, actually, it's good. Where would these things be? All right, so what we need to do now, I think this is too big to search the whole space. Mm, kind of. Um, I'm going to do a search. Well, let's see. Let's look at what TPC files we have. Um, not many. Um, and I'm not counting the old versions. So let's see if we have here body 539. Okay, that's fine. Do we have here body 501? Which we probably do, yeah. That's body 501. But body 539, no go. Okay. So wherever the hell the data for body 539, which I believe is Kore, the moon, is is not here. And I'm wondering if there is a, um, well, I guess, I guess the thing's going to just tell us everything that it has. Uh, 501, where's 502? 502, 503, 514, 15, 16, and that's it. So the question is, can we actually ask for the position of, we're going to say Corey now because I think that's what we decided um, and NAFE IDs I think is uh, actually it's not even there, it's um, NBC Git Astro. Alright, so let's see what NAFE IDs are here. Hegemon A. Hegemon. And is there a Hegemon anywhere in here? I don't, there isn't going to be. So now the question is, will Horizons let us uh, look at um, look at Hegemon? And if so, well, there it is, Jupiter's 39th moon, XXXIX. We're looking from the moon, which doesn't matter. Um, well, well, well. No model available. Target primary Jupiter, visible interfere Earth. Well, wow, that's that's interesting. So the sources of the positions are Jupe three. So we don't know how wide, how big Hegemony is. That does not seem correct to me. We know how big the moon is. That's good. Um, okay. There is a temptation to create our own TPC file here uh, based on... Um, well, let's go to Wikipedia, but we, we want the source that Wikipedia uses to determine the... Um, 
and we'll go from here to the moon. Um, three kilometers in diameter. Really? Um, but that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, let's see. Wow. And the sources here are not great. Um, so these moons are effectively points, which means either they're covered or they're not covered. There's very little partial eclipse stuff going on here. Um, but where are they getting this three kilometers number and where can I get it? Um, let's do this. There should be a data sheet for it somewhere. Oh, shiny. Okay. Uh, how it got its name. Um. Um. Diameter. Well, this does not. All right, all right, we're good, we're good, we can do this. Let's see if there's an overview here that tells us 53 named, 26 awaiting official names. Uh, the ones of most scientific, the Galilean ones, of course, are the most interesting. Um, Callisto, Alara. So this might be the case of where we're... Um, we're digging in way too deep and we're going to get to information that's so useless that not even anyone's going to be interested in it. Um, remember the Anake family? Mean radius of about two kilometers. Yeah. Um, uh, Zeus apparently gave birth to her by... P this is just weird. Um, okay, so is there a place we have, like, radiuses of Jupiter's moons, like, combined? Um... Well, that's very nice. Um, oh, this looks like this is it. Now, li <laughs> I like the way the, the radiuses are like <laughs> tiny, uh, tiny, 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 tiny. Orbital parameter, semi major, blah, 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 blah. Um, well, this is it. We need this. I mean, this we're going to save, definitely, and we're going to make a note of this link. Um, now, the question is, do we want to create, it's not hard to do, but do we actually want to do, create a little bit of a, a radar sheet for these so we can make calculations on them? Uh, based on this, uh, based on this, uh, table. And the, uh, let's first of all see if that's even going to work. Well, let's just use Hejan and your mama, Hegemony, as our example. Okay. All right. So let's see here. BC get Astro. Um, do I have a PCK file in here? No, I do not. Um, so I use standard.tm. Uh, and in here I include uh, pick 10 zero, 0 So I'm not going to change it, but I want to look at um, PCK0010. I want to see how it defines... Um, how it defines radii. 
Yeah, like this. Okay, so the way, way we want to do this is if we're going to create our own TPC file, we have to do something like this. Um, and be spread over multiple lights. Okay, so let's just, as a test... Uh, BC Jupiter TPC body 539 radi equal 444 four, four. and then of course we have to include it now um, and I really want to put a warning here saying you really don't want to do this um, jupiter.tpc so now in theory we should be able to get the um, the value for 539 I mean we'll get something for it we won't actually probably won't be very useful but let's see what this does uh, wow that's not good did I, where did I create the damn thing oh yeah that's not where I meant to create it um yeah, let's go ahead and write this to BC Git Astro. Okay. Now, let's see if this works. If it does, I'll be impressed. Could not be found in the kernel pool. Um... The only thing I can think of is when you're providing data, you need, um, in TPC files, you need to do some magic that I've, like this is begin data or something. Um, uh, is there an end date? No, just begin data. So I think you have to do this. So it knows that this is the beginning of the data. Or I'm wrong. Insufficient ephemeris data to compute the state of 539 relative to at the epoch 2020. Good deal. Different error message. Um, okay. All right. Let's do this. There is a program that lets you directly um, directly look into a kernel. And, um, actually, I think if you just do this, you will actually see it. Um, you're not supposed to look at this like this, but, but it's not, you know, it's, this is where they keep the comments right at the top of the file. Um, and there's a nice program to look at this, and I don't remember what it is. Um, let's see. Yeah, well, give me one second here to find it. There's several ones like uh, this. There it is. Spice C60. So is this in my path? I mean, if it is, I'll be very surprised. Um, wow. Should I put that in my path? I mean, that is really, really obscure. And thus, gotta be careful here. Um, oh wow, that's actually not a bad, bad thing to have in your path. So let's go do this. You see, get uh, Brighton, I think it is, or path. No, no, dot t shell. And let's add to Mr. Path. That is one hell of a path. Um, but that's not, that's even not even the path I'm looking for. We're looking for the path, the, the binary path. Oh, that's not too bad at all. I mean, it will be worse now. Okay, come on, seriously. And let's just add this in there. Um probably a really bad idea. But let's see if that's linked in there. 
Wait. Do I not have a T-Shark file here? Because... Um... Oh, that's really cool. Files that do and don't exist at the same time. <laughs> that's probably a result of the secure shell mount. Let me do a quick cleanup here. Let me do a link minus s bc git uh, brighton dot t shark here or not. Yeah, there's there's a limit to how much you can do with um, with uh, secure shell uh, file systems. All right, let me just source this directly and then. Oh yeah, I don't have my private aliases either here. That's okay. All right. So comment. Oh, I do I need to. Do, oh, I don't even need to do a rehash. Nice. Okay. Comment Jupiter. Three ten BSP. Um, extract comments from the binary kernel. Mm, read the comments. Don't extract them. There we go. And so what this says is this this is Jupiter 310. It covers um, these these moons here, and then it's got a bunch of other crap we don't care about. 343 covers these moons here. And there it is. There's a jam. It got Jamama. Oh, I know what's wrong. Yeah, over here in standard dot um, tm. Uh, we do include Jupiter 310, oh yeah, here somewhere, but we don't include Jupiter 343, which we can now do. Now, let's see if we can get Himogeny Yomamana, Yomamanama, um, to do something. Uh, no idea where the hell I am right now. Here we go. Not happy, because there weren't any, but, you know... Okay, you better find some. Okay. So now I'm tempted to see if we can use hegemony um as a as a as a um, as a location, and I don't know if that's going to be true. That that is a fairly obscure looking moon there, and it does not appear to be on the list of things you can you can go to. Um. So now, and now, now we're building up our really horrendous answer here uh, to do mention BC Jupiter dot TPC casually. Um, so what we're going to do here is I think we can use the uh, the data sheet that we had to build in the uh, the radiuses of the various Jovian moons uh, that don't already have. Yeah, that's going to be tricky too, actually. Uh, well, we only have one TPC file, and I think the only thing we get bodies are for are, are very, very few of them. Um, so we could probably fill this in and then remove the ones that are redundant. So let's take a look here. So another problem we're facing, I think, is... Um, Oh wow! It even has like numbers for ones that are uh, that are triaxial ellipsoids. That's nice, but it doesn't for Io, Europe, and Ganymede. Uh, that's just bizarre. Unless they actually are like eighteen twenty one point five times eighteen twenty one point five times. Um, let's find that out real quick. Um, it might be that they're so close to being a perfect uh, uh, radar. That's Earth. That's Jupiter. Here we go. No, 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 they're not. I don't know why they, they bother to... Uh, 125 times 73 times... 
And these are not in order either, so this is a good stuff that we have to pick up. Um, we have to figure out what, what the NAIF IDs are. Oh, actually, hang on. Oh, good, Roman numerals makes it so much easier. They actually might be mentioning um, what they are in Roman numerals, and I might, we might be able to use that, because, like, this is, uh, this is J33, which would be 533 as a satellite number. Um, so this would require some work to get all this parsed out. Um, as to whether or not it's worth it, I mean, one of the questions was about Metis specifically. Uh, and Metis is 30, it's very tiny, it's very, very tiny. Uh, if we could put a lower limit of like 3.1, we could eliminate a lot of the, or 3.5 or 4 or something, um, or even 5. We could eliminate a lot of these. On the other hand, it might be cool to sort of, uh, to sort of decide that these things are moons and therefore they can be eclipsed. They are lunar eclipses. So, now normally I would be tempted to take something like this and stick it into numeric, the, uh, the GNUmeric actually, the spreadsheet, and then see if it automatically tries to format it, in which case we have something useful. Although I think this, the the um, the source here should be yeah this is actually not too bad um, uh, let's see I don't want to write a Roman numeral converter and be interesting though um, but I think we can get from this and from the NAIF IDs we can we can pull something out of this uh, and that would be a complete hack of course. And the other problem is I don't think even, um, oh, wait, oh great, so it goes to 516 and then it decides it's going to quit. Um, for some reason body 505, um, only mean rate I provided for Ganymede and Callisto. What? So why are you giving us three values here? All right. Uh, so I guess they decide to stop at body five O's. Body five one seven isn't going to be in there. Yep. Lots of fun. Okay. Um. So the temptation. So there's lots of ways we can go here. Uh, we could. Um, just do this for Jupiter's largest satellites or um, the first se 16 satellites for which we have data already and we don't need to add data. We could add data for the other satellites. Um, at, at some point you've got to ask though, uh, is this really a lunar eclipse if you're just basically covering up uh, a, a point basically in space that is minuscule? Um, and I don't know if I want to answer that question. Um, and some of these things are just really crazy orbits. So I guess at some point we would want to, uh, would want to do that. Um, and then once we compute all these eclipses, we also want to see how many things are being eclipsed at any given time. So, you know, there might be zero eclipses, there might be four eclipses if all four ones are at the dark side of the of Jupiter, so on and so forth. Um, quite a bit to do here. I'm actually fairly happy that we've got the um, penumbral and um, partial and full eclipses working. I think we can get that working a little bit better uh, if we limit our, if we use sort of a broad search for penumbral eclipses and then boil it down to umbral eclipses. Um, so let's see here. Mm. Uh, there are several projects I sort of wanted to move on to, uh, but I'm not sure what they're going to be. I'm going to go ahead and cut the stream now, and I don't know if we're going to do any more work on this. This is perhaps the end. It's all going to be in Git. I'm going to push it in just a sec. And if you want to, you can work on it from there. Um, and I might come back to this as well at some point. 
But at this point, I think the interesting part of this, which is computing eclipses, both partial and total, and incidentally penumbral, uh, is done. So I may or may not be back in a few minutes. Thank you for watching. Stopping the stream now.